Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Logan and today we are going to be looking at the A Little Rain Oracle, a 50 card botanical oracle by Ambie Sun. Uh, will help the flowers, oh, I get it, A Little Rain will help the flowers grow. Um, this deck is by the creator of the Orient's Tarot or Orient's Animal Tarot, depending on which, if you have the, um, oops, box was a little tight, depending on if you have the mass market edition or the indie. So this is not my first floracle, flower oracle, if you will, um, but it is one that I've probably been the most excited about in a very long time. So I had the Pythia Botanical Oracle Volume 1 back in like 2018, and that was fantastic. Used it constantly, got really great readings with it, and then it decided that our time together was over. It was like, nah, um, I've helped you. I got other people I need to help, so... Uh, bitch by, and that was fine. I still miss it sometimes. I'm still tempted to try the second volume, but I'm afraid that if I buy the first volume again, it's just going to be a repeat. Um, and then I've tried a couple other floral oracles over the years, and none of them have really stuck. But this one is just you know, when you get a deck and you haven't even used it yet, but you know that you're going to get on. Apparently, I forgot to put the ribbon back under that. Also, this packaging is gorgeous. I'm not, I'm not one for a split deck box, but the packaging in this is really beautiful. Um, it's got, I don't know if you can tell, it's got like an oil slick, almost like dark uh, pond under dark shade, hollow foil to it. Really beautiful. Um, guidebook. It's also really nice, feels great. Uh, a Little Rain features 50 beautiful florals from all around the globe. This oracle deck can be used for <laughs> for divination, self-reflection, and to inspire your creative process. Um, we also have line art of each card next to its card meaning page, which is lovely. Um, I love that we get like three keywords as well as paragraphs. We have paragraphs that go into the plant lore and I think sometimes habitat and things like that. We'll take a look at those more in depth. Uh, one of the things that really excited me about this deck is that there are so many flowers and plants in here that I have never seen in a flower deck before. And I love that in a deck. Like, not everything needs to be 50 types of roses. Roses are great, but we don't need every single deck to be like the same old same, right? So without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, it also came with this really pretty little certificate of authenticity, which has the uh, like holographic sparkles on it. So this is number, I think that's 1800 of 2000. It's just, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump into it. So the first card we have Asphodel, which I believe has some Greek refer um, Greek relevance to death and such, but don't quote me. Um, one of the things I'm excited to work with this deck for is to get a better grip on flower lore because I find flower lore super interesting. Um, one of my favorites being the lore around chicory, that if you go out on, is it the night of St. James? I can't remember which saint it is, but you go out on a certain night of the year at midnight, and if you use a golden blade to cut the flower of a chicory plant while being absolutely silent, that flower will then act like a skeleton key and open any lock that it's pressed against. Um, however, if you, if you don't do it silently, you will die on the spot, or so the legend goes. Um, I'm so excited to see Bleeding Heart in a deck. I, I do have another floral deck that has this, the Magical Botanical Oracle. I love both of them. It's one of my favorite flowers. Wanted to grow them for a long time. Couldn't really because I don't think they do very well in super hot climates. I could be mistaken, but I'm somewhere now with very temperate weather and I can't wait to plant some this year. Bluebells are gorgeous. Cantuta, uh, apologies in advance. I'm unfamiliar with a lot of the flower names in this deck and plants in this deck, so... If I butcher the pronunciation, please forgive me and know that I am an ignorant bitch. Um, <laughs> cattail, I think, is really fun to have in here. Cherry blossoms. Mm, not uncommon in decks, but so beautiful. Now, Chinese lanterns, I think, are so cool. And I've not personally seen one in a flower oracle or plant oracle before. So let's look up and see what Ambisun has written about the Chinese lantern. 
What did they say? Okay, Chinese lantern flower. Rebirth, protection, hope. Chinese lantern flowers have been appreciated for centuries for their unique shape and whimsical growth cycle. Even when its petals have been reduced to a translucent husk, the fragile remains serve as a shelter for cherry-like fruit. Okay, so these used to be petals on the outside of it. That's so fascinating. So cool. And they look, I don't know if you've ever seen photographs of these. This is an extremely lifelike illustration. Uh, they are fascinating to behold, especially when instead of like having the black background, you see other bits of nature like in the yard behind them. It's so cool looking. Um, the fruit plays a vital role in the Japanese Bond Festival as it is used as an offering to guide the souls of the dead. The flower itself is planted for its ornamental beauty. With bright red petals at, that bloom like flames, autumn becomes that much more colorful when viewed alongside the Chinese lantern flower. Oh, I wonder where these grow and if I can plant some. Uh, just as the bright berry grows within the skeletal remains of its petal husk, this card represents hope and rebirth, reminding us that there is always more to our present circumstances than doom, gloom, and emptiness. Rough patches give way to brighter days, and while it may be bittersweet now, there is comfort in knowing that new life can always grow, even in the presence of tragedy. Focus on what you can do and understand that... Sorry. Focus on what you can do and understand that your circumstances will get better in time and keep moving forward. If things aren't quite so dire, take this card's meaning as an overall theme of protection or support. Are you protecting someone? Perhaps you are being protected by others or in need of some if you feel like that uh, if you feel that to be lacking. This card could be encouraging you to acknowledge the relationships you've built and encourages you to recharge your creative energies with the love and support of those near you. Oh, so we're like we're like the sweet little fruit uh, in the in the midst of the petal husks. That's really sweet. Um, we all need people we can rely on. And we all should aspire to be someone who can be relied on in return. Sorry, I don't know where my reading skills went today, but they are not present. <laughs> Identify those in your life uh, who fit that role for you and seek out those who could use support from you as well. Every phase of life, be it stormy or calm, becomes easier to face when you know you are loved and protected. Listen to the universe around you and seek out open arms when you need them. That's really sweet. Um, I'm wondering... I'm kind of wondering if the entire deck is going to have this sort of sweet, like, it's okay to take a little bit of a rest, here's what you need to do to recharge type of energy to it. Because I think with the title, a little rain helps the flowers to grow, like on the back of the box it said. I think that would be really cool um, thematically. Because it's like, it's not fluffy, it's just like, there, there. Um, we have Clover, which I love it when Clover cards include the actual flower corpse flower. I've never seen that in a deck before. Daffodil. I'm so excited. So these are such, at least where I am, such spring flowers. And where I used to live, we literally did not get spring. So I've never been somewhere where daffodils just crop up in people's yards. And this is uh, our first spring in the new house. And so we have tiny, what looks like miniature daffodils out front. And I am pumped. Daisy. Dandelion. Fern. Forget me not. Oh, I love a foxglove so much. Frangipani, which I've never seen that in a deck before. Fuchsias. Oh, I love fuchsias. I just saw these in person for the first time, uh, like in November, I think, or December. Um, me and my family went to a little, like, um, arboretum sort of situation, uh, and they had all sorts of different flowers, things that I wouldn't expect to grow in the northeast of the United States in the winter. <laughs> like there were Datura and uh, uh, Devil's Trumpets, not Devil's Trumpets, Angel Trumpet, the Brugmansia as well. There was a lot of like tropical plants. And I was like, how are y'all doing this? <laughs> what is this witchcraft? Hemlock, hibiscus, it's a beautiful red. Hydrangea, jellyfish tree. That's a really cool one that I haven't seen before. Um, combi? Combi, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it is fascinating looking. Lily of the Valley, which is one of my favorite flowers, and I think it's interesting because it's not a true lily, but it's so, so beautiful, and they're so tiny. Ugh. Just like the Bleeding Hearts, they're tiny, tiny flowers, and apparently I have a thing for tiny flowers. Lithops? Um, I think I've seen these before in other illustrations, but I don't think I've ever seen an actual photo of one. Lotus, stunning. Look at that pink. Moccasin. 
I hadn't heard of these before either. They look sort of like orchids and parrot flowers, do they not? I think it's called a parrot flower. Nasturtium. We have our orchids. Paddo. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. They look really cute though. Ah, there we go, parrot flowers. I hadn't heard of these before either until looking at this deck. Really beautiful passion flower there. It's really cool too because they have this sort of cosmic thing going on. I love the like black clouds framing the bottom and then we have the white specks in the background. It's really cool. Poppy. Love a poppy. Love that red. Prickly pear. I'm so happy we have a cactus in here. Beautiful. Protea or Protea. I don't know how you pronounce it. Queen of Night. These are really, really interesting plants that, if I'm not mistaken, bloom incredibly rarely. And uh, I've yet to see one fully blooming. Uh, my mom has one. I, I think she brought it with her from Louisiana when we moved. And she's witnessed it blooming at night before. But I've yet to see it, and I'm jealous. Rachefric, maybe? I'm guessing. Guessing at this point. Rumduel, also guessing at this point. What a fascinating, interesting looking plant. So cool. Saffron, love. Because I think these are crocuses, yeah? I want to say saffron comes from a crocus. Do they? Do they not? Maybe they don't. Maybe I'm out here spreading misinformation. Let's see. Uh, saffron is one of the most coveted, aromatic, and expensive spices in the world and is primarily used in South Asian and Middle Eastern cuisine. Thin strands of red. Carried from Crete. Okay, maybe it's its own plant. I thought it was a crocus though, because they look pretty similar. But I guess this does stand a bit off of the ground, whereas the crocus is like, boop. So, okay, I learned something. Thank you. Thank you, Ambisun, for teaching my ass something. <laughs> Snakehead flower, which has such an interesting patterning on the petals. Snowdrops. Uh, we actually have some of these. There's a tree that is kind of in between our yard and the neighbor's yard. And the base of it uh, a few weeks ago just erupted with snowdrops. And it was so freaking cute. Uh, and I think right now there are some crocuses out there <laughs> blooming around it. So I'm just enamored with all of the late winter, you know, not quite spring flowers that come up in this part of the world. They are stunning. Stewart's Desert, no, Sturt's Desert Pea. Never heard of it, looks really cool. Sunflower. Tie back, I, which I think this is also called Jade Vine, I want to say. Um, I had never heard of this one either until looking at this deck online. And yeah, this is a very, <laughs> we don't get blues very often naturally occurring in flowers and nature. Um, and so that we get this really interesting blue, pale blue green, I think it's just fascinating. Um, and they're, they're also, you know, blooming out of these little purpley bits. Um, it looks just as alien and fantastic in person, like uh, in photographs, I mean. So really, really curious to work with this deck. Windflower, I'd never heard of until playing Animal Crossing. And then this version of the deck, this limited edition, first edition, what, what have you, uh, came with two bonus cards, uh, which were Harvest and Light, I think just as like seasonal ones because, um, and because the creator's generous and sweet and has an appreciation for cutesy things. And I think the uh, production and stuff on this deck was wrapping up in the like late fall, early winter. So that's probably why we get two seasonal cards. They're very cool, very pretty. Uh, the card backs are gorgeous. I love this wheel with almost like um, the star kind of reminds me of the ones you see on like uh, maps where you where you get the, uh, not the, is it the, not the compass rose. Mm. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about with the north, south, east, and east and west on it. Reminds me of that. Um, so yeah, this is one that I'm really excited to work with. Uh, it feels just like the indie version of the Orion's Tarot, which is I think like a matte uh, anti-scratch UV coating. Um, so it's going to shuffle really easily, really beautifully. A very uh, encouraging, empowering sort of deck. Uh, and not necessarily a fluffy one, which I think is really nice because I feel like when we get flower themed decks, sometimes it can be a bit fluffy. Um, so I'm really excited to work with this one. Let me know if you have any plans to get this deck, if you are tempted by this deck. 
I want to know. I want conversations as usual because I'm a chatty and nosy bitch. And uh, in the meantime, I will put a link down below of where you can find this beautiful a little rain oracle. And I mean, come on, the, the packaging even comes with this super cute teardrop peekaboo. That's, and, and, the, and the, the spot UV coating or spot gloss coating, whatever you want to call it, you get these nice raindrops around the one big raindrop cutout. Like it's just, even the packaging, just beautiful design. And I really, I really come to not expect anything else from Andy Sun, to be quite honest. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope this was a good time for you. And until next time, bye-bye.